What's up, good people? What's up, junior scientists? My name is Brandon, a.k.a. the Bearded Scientist, a.k.a. the Science Guy, a.k.a. the Martha Stewart of Science. I'm the founder and lead Imaginary Seats to STEM. We provide students with hands-on science activities that are supplemental to what you learn in the classroom. Students, today you will be able to learn, oh my bad, demonstrate safe lab practices during this activity. You're going to differentiate between chemical and physical changes. You're going to compare solids, liquids, and gases. Today's branch of science is chemistry, and our concept is properties of matter. Let's go. I'm excited about that. First, let's develop an understanding of what change is. We can't always do that. Um, through scientific means, but here's a good definition for us today. So there's multiple definitions of what change is, but for us, we're gonna focus on the verb, make someone different. What makes someone different? Like that is an excellent, excellent question that we're gonna dive in to uh, later on today. But for right now, we have the, we've laid the foundation of what change is. We're focused on what makes someone different than you, okay? A chemical change, we're gonna dive into chemical and physical change. A chemical change is when a substance combines with another to form a new substance called chemical synthesis or ke chemical decomposition. This process creates two or more different new substances. Examples of chemical reactions are burning, cooking, rusting, and rotting. Those are great examples. Physical changes are changes affecting the form of a chemical substance, but not its chemical composition. Physical changes are used to separate mixtures into their component compounds, but not to be used to separate compounds into their chemical elements or simpler compounds. Examples of physical changes are boiling, melting, freezing, and shredding. Often chem uh, physical changes can be undone if energy is input, in is input. The only way to reverse a chemical change is via another chemical reaction. So what that means is you can't necessarily reverse or undo it unless energy is input into it and that's usually heat. Today we will explore chemistry through lotion making and discuss the beauty of your skin. Yes, that is right. The beauty of your skin. You may ask, yo, be, yo, be science. How are we going to explore chemistry by making lotion? How are we going to do that? We're going to simply focus on moisturizing. Moisturizing is a crucial step to the, uh, how to maintain your skin's healthy cells and to protect them from irritation. Now, when your skin is dry and irritated, it causes breakouts and acne. By moisturizing your skin, you can reduce the chances of your skin, um, any type of skin problems or problems arising. Let me correct that. I'm not going to say any problems because everybody's different. The amount of melanin that we have, all of these things are key factors into the type of moisturizing that's necessary for your skin. Some people may need shea butter. Some people may use need coconut oil. Some people might just uh, need lotion and that's it. And that's okay. Me, I'm old school country. I use Vaseline on my skin because I'm country. Don't judge my life. Gosh. Don't judge my life. It's very, I know. Thank you for that. Yeah, hey. They judgmental over here. I'm pretty sure you're not. But let's keep it moving. For this activity, you'll need several things, okay? And you'll need essential oil. That's about 4.8 grams or 5 grams of essential oil. You're going to need uh, 40 grams or 3.92 grams of coconut oil or shea butter. You're going to need 28 grams of water. You're going to need 80, uh, 80 milliliter plastic bottle. You're going to need mica, which we're going to dive into in a second. And last but not least, stearic acid. Now I'm going to have a link that's associated with all of these things so you can upload at a later date, okay? So before we get started, we must exercise caution. The substances we are working with are going to be hot or warm. Please ask for help if, if you're under the age of 18. If you're under the age of 18, adult supervision is required for this activity. Let's start this stimulating experience. So, now we gotta put this stuff together. Again, adult supervision required if you're under the age of 18. You wanna have adult heat, your water, your coconut oil, 
uh, and the emulsifying wax because the emulsifying ha wax have to be heated. Now, this is heated. I didn't say boiling. We're heating this stuff. That's it. Now, you may not have this, but you can't see it, but here we go. Check me out real quick. I'm using a scale. This scale is what I'm using to measure out things in grams. This is what I'm using, okay? This is what we're using to measure out things in grams. Bam. So, that's what we have for right now. Now, I have a, pa a paper cup that I'm using for this. This is going to help me with, instead of using a bowl, we're going to use this. Okay, now I place it on a scale and I zero out my cup. I'm also using a wooden popsicle stick for this activity. This allows us to stir it. You can use a spoon if you like, but I'm using a popsicle stick for that. Now again, the substances that we're using are hot and I'm in my mini lab. I'm not in the big lab, I'm in the mini lab today. And I'm going to weigh out all the things that I'm needing, starting with my stearic acid. I'm using one fourth cup of stearic acid, I mean one fourth tea, a teaspoon, and that's going to stiffen my substance. Now, if you're, if you're fancy like me and you have a micro pipetter, this is a, a micro pipetter, I'm gonna, ooh, 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 wind it up. A few moments later. Don't judge me, don't be like that. And I'm going to add my preservatives. I'm adding 700 microliters. I'm adding 700 microliters of this preservative. It is not a trade secret, but I can't tell you what it is. Okay. And, hold on, because we're in the lab, for all my all my scientists that's watching this, don't judge me. Yes, I'm touching my micro my micro pipetters tips. Don't judge me. Now I'm adding my uh, scent in there as well. We're gonna use roughly 4.8 grams or of uh, essential oil. Okay. And then I just take a bite, and then I just get to load until my scale change. Now, you don't want to add too much because that's going to be a lot, okay? Now, let, uh, next, we're going to add our coconut oil. Now, this is warm. If you notice how I'm grabbing it, we're adding boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh, did I add too much? Just right. Now, we're right at the uh, 40 gram mark for our coconut oil. That's going to be amazing. Now I'm adding emulsifying wax, and for this emulsifier, we need roughly eight grams. That was spot on, you all. Now, I said we're gonna use mica. Boom, this is our mica. Now our mica is very simple. Mica is the, mica is the pigment used in, used in lip, lipstick lip balm whatever i'm making this for my mother-in-law so she can have so because she wants lotion okay boom we're going to take this and we're going to grab us some mica and add it to that so i added the mica to i've added the mica to my to my mixture okay and we're going to mix it now you can't see this just yet but i added my mica it makes a really pretty slurry now I've added my mica, I've added my emuls uh, essential oil, I've added my emulsifying wax, I've added my coconut oil. Boom. Now we're gonna do this multiple times because I wanna make sure that you all uh, get a firm understanding of what we're doing. Last but not least, now you may say, Brandon, what makes this, what, how are we gonna get this? Like you can see, you can see my concoction just a little bit. Now for us, I'm gonna add water to this from here because I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take this stick out okay I'm gonna take this stick out and I'm gonna pour water in here watch this watch closely can't pour too much Ooh. can y'all see that chemical reaction look at that look how it turned white oh look at it Ooh, how much, let me see, did I do too much? Barely. 
so I've made my lotion. But let's try that one more time. I'm, I'm going to let this sit for a second and cool. Okay, we're gonna let this cool for a second because I wanna do it over. So I can't do one, one batch of lotion for one person and not for the other. So I gotta make some more, okay? Get another stick. That's a lot of beeping going on. My timer's going off, y'all. So I'm going to make some blue lotion for my dad. I'm making blue lotion for my dad. We're not gonna put too much on in there. We're just gonna put a little bit in there. And we're gonna do, we're gonna make lemongrass, okay? We're gonna make lemongrass lotion to make, to give it a little pop of fresh healthiness, okay? Oh, cause we don't wanna cross contaminate it. Boom, for all my scientists that's out there. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of essential oil I'm putting in there because he deserves it. I want him to smell fancy. Don't you, sometimes don't you want to smell fancy? Okay, now I gotta go back and again, one fourth cup of essential, uh, essential oil. Stick acid, stick acid is meant to help stiffen the substance. We're gonna, we're gonna put our coconut oil in first, which is 40 grams. I'm gonna put our 40 grams of coconut oil in there. Yeet. Yeah, spot on. That was spot on. Now, we're gonna put our stearic acid, uh, nope, our emulsifying wax in there. It's worth really eight grams. Boom, we got our, now, I have to, we have to make sure we mix. Okay, we gotta start that process of mixing. This smells great, by the way. It smells amazing, okay? Make sure I got my stick. Now, last but not least, we gotta add our water, okay? We gotta add roughly 28 milliliters or 30, 30 grams of water, because we gotta make right at, <sighs> spot on. Now, let's mix it. Oh, I gotta let y'all see this. Check this out. Look how pretty that is. Look how pretty that is, okay? Now, after we get that mixed up all nice and pretty, we have to let that cool for a second as well. We're gonna put our blue stick over here. Oh, this is shaping up to be just divine, you all. Just, like, just amazing, okay? Let's pour this over here. Make sure you all see this. Here we go. And bam, there we have it. We have our, we have our, our pink mica or this is, we're gonna call this raspberry lotion. We're gonna call this raspberry lotion. I'm really excited about that. And we're gonna we're gonna put this to the side over here for our raspberry lotion to make sure that we that we're getting it. Mm. That is so beautiful, you all. If you all could see this, it's thickening up. So so let's move on to the blue. Okay, let's get our blue. Let's get our blue on here. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. We're gonna throw a, we're gonna throw a nice little cap on this so it can vent on both of them. Now, now there we have it. Some great 
some great lotion just for the people I love. Look at that, amazing. And the consistency is absolutely beautiful. Look at that, that consistency is absolutely gorgeous. You see? Pew, 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 pew. You gotta love it, right? We gotta love our lotion. Now, you're asking yourself, you say, Mr. Brandon, you didn't mention melanin. I'm glad you asked. So, <sighs> hear me out. <laughs> no, seriously. Melanin is a broad term for a group of natural pigments found in most organisms, like mica. Mica is a pigment. Melanin is produced through a, a multi-stage chemical process known as melanogenesis, where the oxidation of an amino acid, tyrosine, is followed by polymerization. We'll talk about polymerization in another activity. Besides providing, pigment, providing pigmentation in humans and animals, melanin also plays an important biological role by protecting us against the sun's damage, more importantly, the, uh, against UV light. Melanin helps protect epidermis cells or the outer layer of your skin from the UV light. So as you all work on crafting your amazing uh, lotion, make sure that we actually use this. It's very important because there is so much beauty within your skin, which each and every one of us that's here today. So as we get ready to close out, over the last six years here at Seeds to STEM, we've helped upwards of 7,000 students in North Texas reimagine the way they think about science. And we're just getting started. Don't forget to join me, the Bearded Scientist, as we work to share the power of STEM education in your community by following us on Facebook and Instagram and soon to be TikTok at Seeds to STEM. Have a stimulating day.